Downtown Business Club, hosted by the Downtown Improvement District. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the uh, Downtown Business Club. This is hosted monthly by the Downtown Improvement District and today we are uh, looking into the whole concept of businesses downtown. Um, I happen to know that there are several businesses downtown with what we do at the Downtown Improvement District. Uh, creating a vibrant, helping create a vibrant urban core uh, for Northeast Indiana is our mission. And that does not happen without people in the ecosystem adding value and so many times through the business uh, endeavors of folks, that's, that's really the way it takes place. There's, we do events, we have uh, all these various opportunities to engage the community. So today we are focusing on three individuals, uh, three businesses that uh, have been successful in downtown Fort Wayne. Uh, we intend to uh, broaden this over the, over the uh, next months so we can continue to tell the story. And today is really kind of desi designed to be a conversation about uh, what it takes to be successful in downtown, uh, what, what are some of the business opportunities that folks have embraced. Because many times it's not a straight line, it's not a, uh, it's not a path uh, that just goes from point A to point B. So we hope to hear today about uh, the various opportunities that folks have embraced. And um, we'd like to start off with a brief presentation by the three businesses here, uh, Ja Juice with Julia Holler, uh, Danny McGuire with uh, Prana Yoga, AKA 1301 Connect is another element. And then Matt Kelly with uh, One Lucky Guitar and uh, The Good Ones. So uh, we'll start with Julia and she can l tell us about her uh, her experience and her business in downtown Fort Wayne for starters. All right, so thank you guys for coming. I'm honored to be here. Um, it's interesting because all of our businesses are in the same building, which is kind of fun for us to get to hang out today. And I'm one of the owners of Jai Juice, and we opened in October of this past year, 2014. Um, but our idea started in 2013. It took an entire year for it to manifest into an actual business. So that was something I was not expecting um, going into it. And um, kind of what got us started, oh, maybe I should tell, we are a juice bar. So in case you guys don't know, maybe I should preface that. We do um, organic cold pressed juices, we bottle them. And we also do superfood smoothies, coffee, tea, um, and we do some muffins and little things like that. So that's kind of where, what our business does. And it's very small, we don't have a huge menu. Um, but we wanted to provide access to health through these juices. So our main focus is the cold pressed juice. Um, and that kind of how we got the idea, Danny actually owns part of it, so she kind of ignited the spark um, for this, which she's very good at doing. Um, and in 2013, we actually had to move Prana Yoga to a different building because of all the construction with the Randall Lofts. And when we moved, we saw there was a perfect space right next door for a little juice bar for our students. We were thinking this could be really cool. Um, there isn't a juice bar in Fort Wayne and nobody's bottling juices, so you can just go in and grab one and go. So we then end up going to Detroit to check out some juice bars up there. And we checked out three different businesses. One was doing a lot of raw foods and had juices. Another place was just bottling juices and shipping them. And then another place was kind of like a little cafe that did salads and other stuff. So we kind of checked out three different businesses and kind of decided what we liked from each one and kind of pulled together our own thing. So that's kind of where the it started. And Danny's been into juicing for a really long time. And that summer before we decided to go into it, I started juicing and I was doing it at home. I was buying all this produce and I was cleaning my juicer every morning and I was like, this is not worth it. So I need to figure out some way I can get my own juices without having to do all the work. However, I'm still doing a lot of the work. So maybe next year I won't be doing as much and I'll just be going in and grabbing a bottle and then leaving. <laughs> but, um, so that was kind of the start of the business. Um, I would say a lot of our ideas come from other businesses. So if I'm like, oh, I wanna do 
superfood smoothie with this superfood, I kind of can look online and see what other recipes are out there or what other businesses are doing. Or if I went on a trip and I tried something that was awesome, then I can kind of take it back and work with the ingredients or the elements and see what works for our juice bar and what we have. We try to use a lot of the stuff that we're already getting so that way we're not ordering like a certain type of produce just for one item. We kind of like to spread it around because that helps us with our costs as a new business. Um, and then our customers provide a lot of insight of what they want to see. Like, hey, we really like this juice, but I need a juice that doesn't have sugar. Touch this. Okay, it didn't show up. Okay, good. Um, I need a juice that doesn't have sugar in it, so could you do something without apple? And so based on what people want, um, kind of go from there and we can't always be like oh yeah we can do that tomorrow we kind of take that into consideration and then kind of develop things from there um, so that is part of what works for us and kind of with new ideas some of the pitfalls was we were hoping to be open probably spring of 2014 and we didn't get open until October so the construction was a huge process something I was not prepared for at all and I was not prepared to have to check in with the people doing the construction be like why is it taking so long why is it taking so like literally constantly why aren't you doing this where are you like I'm not that person who like rides people I'm just kind of like oh yeah you'll get it done but I had to become that person and that was not fun um, so if you're doing any type of construction just give yourself an extra year and you'll be good <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be good you'll be on your timeline you'll be on track um, so that was a little bit discouraging. So just sticking with it um, really helped out. And finally, the, once the day came, we were open. It was awesome. Because it was like, oh my god, it's finally here. So that was kind of part of the pitfall, I would say. Um, another thing for us is that our juices only last three days. So it's been very hard to find that balance of making too much so it goes bad, making too little so we're running out. So kind of trying to figure out how much works for us so we aren't wasting produce and going through a lot of our products. Um, and that's something with having a restaurant type business I believe is very hard. Um, but we kind of worked around it. We kind of finally found our groove with making the juices and kind of how much we need each day. And it's still kind of changing because we've only been open for a little bit. So we're starting to grow more. So we've been increasing. But um, it's kind of, that's kind of a area that we're still working in. That'll probably continue to change as we continue to grow and evolve as well. Um, let's see. Let me change my thing. OK. So part of what we offer are juice cleanses, which you can do a juice cleanse. Um, and people are, you know, why would I do a juice cleanse? So with this juicing in Fort Wayne, there's a lot of education um, for people, which I wasn't really thinking about at the time. But a lot of people don't know about juicing at all. Um, and if they're coming in, we kind of have to explain, you know, what's in the juice, why would you do it, all the benefits. And then also with cleansing. So we have a one-day cleanse and a three-day cleanse, and they can be very good to let your body rest and just absorb nutrients as opposed to working to digest. So we offer that and we offer the juices which is our main focus. But then I didn't want to just do juice, I wanted to be a little bit more accessible. So we have a couple smoothies which people <coughs> seem to really like too. It's a little bit more hearty instead of just having the juice. So if you're you know, looking for something to get you through, a smoothie would be better. It'll stay longer with you because you're digesting it. Um, so we decided to do that, and we also decided to do coffee and tea as well because people like coffee, you know. It might not be the healthiest thing, depending on what you put in it, but it's still something that people like. So I was like, well, what's going to help our bottom line? You know, we want to have the juices, obviously, but we're in Fort Wayne, so who knows how well it'll go over. So then we decided to add the smoothies and coffee and tea, especially because it's so cold here. Um, and we get our coffee from Utopian Coffee, so I'm really excited that we're offering that since it's roasted in Fort Wayne. Um, and I think that's definitely helped us is having that local coffee that people know and like. And so we're working with another downtown business, which helps us because they help promote us, we help promote them. So that is kind of a nice thing. Um, and then we're also working with other farmers around here who are local 
for some of our produce. And now they can't obviously provide us with everything because of the seasons, but in the spring, we'll be able to get a lot more of our stuff from um, local farmers like um, Get Fresh Farms and the Young Urban Homesteaders. And we've just been partnering with different people, which is again, nice for them and nice for us because we're cross promoting. Um, so yeah, and then a big part of my <laughs> business are my employees because they are awesome <laughs> and they get really excited and they do really well on social media um, and so it's not just me saying the same things over and over again like the same promotions coming from my brain I get other people involved and I think sometimes people are scared to let other people get involved with their social media but I would just say like go for it you can always take your post down or edit it um, and just make sure you have guidelines of like what you want to see what you don't want to see and like this was one of our biggest posts because they look like they're having fun at work and they're showing our juices and you know somebody else posted it not just myself so I would definitely say like having employees is one of the best things that I did because I could be working at the juice bar all alone and then I would want to kill someone but <laughs> like <laughs> I wanted to hire people who have different ideas and who can talk to me about things like this doesn't work or you know this person said this or you know, this might be a really great idea. It really helps with our procedures and then with being creative. So I would definitely say having a team is something I would suggest instead of just your own self. Or at least have a couple people, if they aren't working for you, who you're, like, bouncing ideas off of or, you know, checking with or kind of a mentor. Like, Danny's owned a couple businesses, and she has really been my mentor through all of this as well as my business partner. Um, just kind of, like, what works and what doesn't. Um, and I would also suggest not trying to do everything yourself. Like at the start, I was like, oh yeah, I can do my own payroll, I can take pictures, I can do all this stuff. And then as I got into it, I was like, well, maybe I should hire somebody to do the payroll. Or, you know, one of my employees takes awesome photos, she's a photographer, so I probably should enlist her to do the pictures because I could do them, but then I'd be doing everything and then I would start to lose my passion for it and just kind of get really run down and tired. So. Yeah, I'd say having a good team is definitely one of the best things I could suggest to do. Um, and then one of the businesses that I admire a lot is I really admire like Bravis um, because he started with a hot dog truck and then got or a cart and got a food truck. Now he has a restaurant. Like that's an awesome way to do it. He started small and just kind of did it really well and then grew and did that really well and then grew. And I would say like definitely taking time. Um, to like do what you're doing well and then maybe add something in and then maybe see if it's working and then you know let it mature and gestate and then maybe expand a little bit more I wouldn't try to go like crazy all at once because you're gonna be overwhelmed and you're probably not gonna end up doing anything good so I just say like focusing in on what you're doing well and then kind of expanding from there would be my advice so yeah I think I'm done <laughs> thank you Thank you, Julia. And there'll be more to come, I'm sure, with questions that folks will want to answer, have uh, ask. Um, Danny McGuire with uh, Prana Yoga will come up next in 1301 Connect, and perhaps she can also talk a little bit about uh, the concept of 1301 Connect and building community with downtown businesses. Thanks for having us today. I'm Danny McGuire. I'm the founder of Prana Yoga Institute of Health and Holistic Healing. And um, we've been in business since 2009, but I did start downtown as a little interior design consultant. So we started off in the 218 Pearl Street of Randall Lofts building, um, probably back in 2006 as an interior designer. And I was always drawn to the downtown um, just to hold the business here. I was feeling that potential of the downtown growing. And so I wanted to get in before that happened when rents were a little bit lower. And, um, and it was always my children that ignited my spark for my businesses. Because I worked for Ethan Allen for many years as a project manager in the interior design field. And then I had a baby. And while I was at home in that kind of introspective state, then something else was calling me. And so I thought, oh, I really want to do something on my own. 
And so I started branching off on my own to hold a little interior design business. And that was great. And it gave me more time to practice yoga, which I loved and been practicing since I was 19. So for almost 20 years now. And eventually the yoga just took over the interior design. I eventually just didn't want to do that. I just wanted to practice yoga all the time and teach people about wellness, something I'd been talking about since I was 16. Um, so then I had my second child, who is um, six years old now, um, turning six this month. And while I was at home with her, she was eight months old, and I thought, I have to go open my own yoga studio. <laughs> and so immediately started looking at places, and we didn't have a lot of capital to do it at the time. And my husband walked into a space, and he was like, this is it. This is perfect. And he was my biggest naysayer. So I knew that something was about to happen. Um, so again, it was just a really small space, and I was going to do everything myself, from checking in students to teaching all the classes on the schedule. Um, and little did I know that like within six months later, we would open up a second location. You know, Julia mentioned starting small, and mine was like went crazy immediately. Um, so for me, it was about finding the support that I needed um, to make it sustainable, because it just kept growing too fast. And that's how it's been through the beginning. Um, so we started out with just yoga classes, and then I got some teachers to teach, and then I hired a manager. Um, six months later, we were opening a second location, and, and it just kept growing from there. One of our biggest pitfalls that we've had is to be moved around a lot. So in the downtown, with all the movement and the exciting energy that's happening down here, there's also a lot of shifts in moving. So we went through four different landlords in five years, and we had to move spaces. And we kept moving to bigger and bigger um, venues, I would say, or studios and centers. And so I kept thinking, how are we going to do this now? Now we can you know, try to hold more classes. And so you know, it's like that saying, if you build it, they will come. So each time that we moved into a bigger space, then our business doubled as well and we got a lot more students. Um, and we increased our, our services, too. Um, so we hold yoga classes, teacher trainings. Um, we do wellness coaching, lifestyle coaching. Um, and it's really a community of wellness, um, which has been challenging in Fort Wayne. We've been on a couple bad lists, and I won't say what they are, but <laughs> for our health. And, um, and so it's hard, because it's not something that's been invested in here. Um, so one of the pitfalls, too, is how do I price our services where they're really supposed to be um, with the value that we're offering? So I wanted something that was a good value, um, but also something that was going to appeal to people. Um, so I get a lot of my trainings in California. And the cost of living, like housing there, is way more expensive. But the meals there are about the same price. You go to a yoga studio, and it's probably three times more than what it is here, um, or even a gym membership. So it's that people just weren't investing in that lifestyle of wellness. And so part of me just wanted to price things really low so that we could you know, be where the competition was. And then, but then I wasn't treating my staff right. I wasn't treating the teachers right, um, because I wasn't able to pay them what they deserved um, for their time. So we started looking at just where we needed to be. And I think by doing that, now people are committed. And it's like when they do sign up for a membership, then they come. So we've seen really great success because they aren't just spending $29 a month on a membership where they could be like, well, if I don't go, it doesn't matter. Like they're investing in themselves and they're investing in our community. And so they do come and they come every day. And we've become a family there. And we've seen great changes in health just from practicing yoga, which seems like stretching to a lot of us, but it's really a whole lifestyle of mindfulness and movement. And you really start to focus on um, your relationships outside of the classroom, too. So that's one thing we've really done well is to build this community. And I heard um, Matt say family, the OLG family, when we sat down. And then Julia said team. And I've always been stressing community. And that's one thing that um, our yoga center really has brought about. Another one of our pitfalls is we had a fire one time. <laughs> and so we thought the studio was burning down. 
and you know one of my students we were in the middle of a yoga class and we all had to leave the building and I thought there it goes there goes the business I've worked so hard for and she said why don't we just have the yoga class in the parking lot and I thought what no this let me like you know be sorry for myself right now that my studio and everything I've worked so hard for is burning to the ground and she's like that's not what you teach us so we actually went in the parking lot and held a yoga class and that's when I was like, oh, we need more of this community. This is awesome. It doesn't matter about the space or that we've been moved around. We, it's the family and the community that always goes with it. And so when we moved to our most recent location at 1301 Lafayette, I thought, now there's all these really cool businesses and there's more room and potential here. So um, you know, bringing in like-minded like people and businesses to grow that community even more. Um, that's why I love being part of downtown, too. So, we also have, oh, the air, okay. So we also have um, the foundation. And this is the nonprofit portion of our business. And this offers free yoga to people with cancer and chronic illness. Now this has taken a little more time to get off the ground, um, but we're doing good work. We offer free classes um, in our downtown location. Um, they're chair-based classes, so people going through chemotherapy, radiation, they can come there and take a class for free. Um, and it's very gentle, not like some of our other classes. And then we also had some interest with Cancer Services of Northeast Indiana. And then since they're being looked at by some other places in Indiana, we've got our programs now in Ezekiel Hospital in <coughs> Indianapolis, as well as the Little Red Door Cancer Agency. So it's like something that grows. There's so much potential, like being in the downtown, and to have it be affordable and to start to build community here. But then there's potential for that global community to arise as well. And then our Teacher Training Institute um, is the one at the downtown location. And again, it's about really offering the life skills and teaching the teachers that um, our global community looks to us for. So we have a lot of students come in from Chicago that come to our teacher trainings that they've just started to hear, hear about in the yoga world, um, about how good our teachers come out of those programs with this kind of holistic approach to teaching. Um, and then part of it is just the workshops too. So this is one of our workshops that we have. We do a lot of free classes and fundraisers for the community to spread awareness um, and we bring in we have a gentleman coming in that started power yoga he's coming in tonight to teach for us and I love bringing them to other downtown businesses because I'm super proud of what we have to offer we have amazing restaurants downtown and um, we have great events here all the time and so I love showing off our downtown and people really love coming to Fort Wayne from California and New York because there is that kind of family and everybody feels really comfortable here. Um, so I admire all the downtown businesses. I do admire the ones that start out slow and then grow because that's not something that I've been <laughs> experienced to. It's like always igniting around me and then I have to go back and dismantle it and be like, how can I make this sustainable? Um, so when you have that much creative energy around you and it spawns off to other people too sometimes, then it's like, going back and getting things in writing, making sure that you have clear communication um, is a really key component of that. Um, so clear expectations on all the parts and making things sustainable in a way that you need to you know, ask for help. Um, make those connections in the community where you can work together, where you can come together to create a really amazing event. Um, we got to be part of Science Central's fundraiser last weekend and that was really fun. They did a great job with their promoting um, and that awareness that they're bringing to the community. It was just fun to see a bunch of adults there playing someplace that I bring my kids. So we need more of those things and while we were there I had a kind of underground um, comedian slip his card to me and I love that. Like you know you go there to network and I love it when people ask for something because that's something that I didn't do the first five years that I was downtown, is ask for help. I was just trying to do it all by myself. 
and Stephen came in and <laughs> met with him one day and and he was like we're here for you we're here to support you so definitely reaching out and asking other businesses to help ask the did to help um, look for grants I recommend you know if you can find a great building now's the time to snatch that up and renovate it there's a lot of great grants out there for helping um, entrepreneurs do that if you're looking forward to starting a business and then you might ha not have to go through all the moves to get to <laughs> the place that you want to be at um, I think if I was conducting the interview I would want to know what makes a good leader and um, this is true just about all entrepreneurs is to listen and that's one of the best things that you know, in my field, it's just about listening. That's why I don't like getting up here and talking that much. <laughs> but um, being able to listen to your employees to see what they want, listen to your customers, um, and just and listen, have some quiet time for yourself so you know that next step. So that maybe it's not you trying to fit this ideal business into a certain box, um, but just tuning in and listening to maybe just changing some of your values. Um, so maybe your values of success will look differently maybe as you're starting to look at your business plan it's not about the money but it's about doing something sustainable and with someone that feels like family and that you get up every day and you're excited to do it Thank you very much, Danny. You know, I just get ex inspired listening to these stories, and uh, um, I think the next one here with, uh, these are two great, great stories, and I think with uh, Matt Kelly with Unlucky Guitar and his inv endeavors will be a, another, another good opportunity to learn more. So, thank you, Matt. So, really flattered to be here, especially to be with Julia and, and Danny, so thanks to the DID for inviting us. Um, I'll, I'll buzz through a couple slides. So, th this has been our home 1301 Lafayette's been the home for One Lucky Guitar. Uh, we're a design and marketing boutique. We started at the end of 2000. Um, in September of 2004, I moved in that building. I was working out of um, half of a duplex on Columbia Avenue where I lived, so I think that's a, a quadplex at that point. Um, I started developing my own clients who would, they thought they were working with a real ad agency and would want to have meetings, and I would always you know, I would be like, well, I just happened to be at the Firefly, so can we just meet there? <laughs> and didn't let on that I was working <laughs> out of my home, out of my kitchen, in fact. Uh, so moving into 1301 Lafayette, for me, it was instant credibility for OLG. Um, we became part of downtown. Um, we had a space then that helped us define our uh, identity. Um, it's been a wonderful home for, for more than a decade now. So I started, it was just me in a 200 square foot space. Now we have over 3,000 square feet. There are 11 of us that work there. Um, we were kind of asked, why are we downtown? This is a big part of why we're downtown, because we want to be able to bike to lunch. <laughs> uh, some of us bike to work. Um, for me, part of growing OLG was uh, I wanted to have a team that was kind of exceptional at every level. And, and part of the recruitment of people um, to One Lucky Guitar is it's very important that we're doing work we believe in for people we believe in, but we wanted to have an environment and culture that people could be energized by. And for us, that was downtown, right? I, I worked before I, um, when I started my career, I worked off Cook Road, and I felt like I was in another world. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't feel like I was part of the scene. Um, we have peers who work, you know, other agencies that are out by the airport or this or that, and it, it feels, I, I would struggle with that. I would struggle kind of going, making that drive every day or making that ride. Um, I could drop a few pounds <laughs> and then ride all the way out there. Um, so downtown has been intrinsic to us. Uh, it's intrinsic to OLG's identity. Uh, the other thing that's been really important to us is to be able to be part of um, being here for a decade now. Like we feel like we can play a part in downtown's um, revitalization and energy. Um, there are many opportunities for all of us to get involved in, in a lot of different ways, formal and informal. Uh, here's the team, the family. Family grew by one. We've got young Arlo back there with Olivia, right? <laughs> the youngest member. Uh, uh, so we've grown. We uh, there are a lot of uh, Fort Wayne folks here. Uh, the gentleman in the upper right, 
probably traveled the longest to be here. He's from Wollongong, New South Wales, which is about an hour outside Sydney. Um, folks here, some of these folks moved away, came back. But I really, I look at this team and I think it's a team of flight risks, right? They could all be off in Chicago on a coast up to Minneapolis to a design hotbed. And, and to get them to stay here, again, I, I have to create an environment where they are challenged and energized and downtown has been a big part of that for us. Um, our space uh, is something, like I said, our, our space helped define the character of our company, and I think that you can find that downtown. We're not in a we're not a strip mall ad agency. Uh, we have clients who request to meet at our place, which is really unique, and and says something to the space that we all get to share uh, in the community that. that Bill and, and Danny have created there. Uh, the kind of work we do, uh, it ranges from, uh, we don't have any single niche. We, we have client, we kind of have one client per industry. Um, and so we serve a lot of different industries. Uh, we're naturally a curious team that, that wants to be, wants to learn new things. No interest at all in being set in our ways. Um, I brought the work that we did to um, when the Alliance the Chamber and Leadership Fort Wayne merged into one entity, it was Greater Fort Wayne Inc., so we worked with them on everything from the name to the initial identity to the pieces that went out to kind of create a new investor network. Um, I mentioned being involved in the community. Uh, we have worked with the DID on block parties, musical events in the past. Um, we got involved with the Embassy in 2007, it was their 85th anniversary, and they said, Hey, we want to do two fundraising shows for our anniversary. One's going to be a high dollar, eighty-five dollar ticket, black tie, Martin Shorts coming in, but we want something that's that's going to get young people in. Can you guys help us? And we pitched an idea called Down the Line. Um, they took a real chance on that general admission. You could take your beer to the seat. Nobody did that, right? And eighteen hundred people the first year, twenty-one hundred the second, twenty-four hundred, which is the sellout for the third and fourth year. And then we felt like the embassy could kind of handle it on their own. We've stepped back, and they've, I think it's down the line nine this year. But we did a lot of that where we were kind of actively involved in things that were going on in the community. The last time we expanded within our space, we thought, what can we, what can we do here? Some of those things, like 2,400 people, I, I really want to be a recluse, and I thought there's too many people, <laughs> so can we do smaller things? So we have a space within our uh, office that it's kind of, it can be a number of things. It can be a gallery, it can be a large conference room, it can be a place we have photo shoots. But we decided to name it the B side, and it's really another side of what we do at One Lucky Guitar. Uh, and often what we have in there, about once a month, we'll have a concert or event of some sort. And those will be musicians or, or artists that we've worked with or really admire that we bring in and do these kind of super intimate shows. It's like 50 people, we don't even have a speaker, you hear the sound of Lafayette Street. It's in, environment unlike any other but we've also made that space available to folks who need a space like that who are doing something really cool and unique in the community so in the lower right you see uh, that was actually a rehearsal but dance contemporary which is kind of a new startup contemporary dance group they need a space where they can perform for 50 people and we're like take it you know we give them the keys and and and, and they had an incredible event there and we've had several events like that um, there's what it looks like when we've got 50 folks in it. That's Raylan Baxter, who is performing there on Monday night, uh, again, this February 23rd. We've got a couple tickets left. He's absolutely incredible. Uh, the other, th so uh, I think the panel was downtown entrepreneurship. I feel like OLG's kind of been around long enough where I don't know that I always feel super entrepreneurial about it, but um, we do have a startup that exists within our walls too, and it's the Good Ones Clothing. So in 2004, we started working with Denise DeMarcus, who founded Matilda Jane Clothing. We've been their agency since then. And three years ago, she's had a demand forever for there to be a boy's side of Matilda Jane or the boy's version of Matilda Jane. She never felt like she could do it herself, her sense of style. She felt like she needed another angle at it. Um, and so together we formed uh, the Good Ones, which makes clothing for kids from 12 months to 12 years old. Um, I don't know what camera's on, but it's available at thegoodones.com. Um, <laughs> and so that's been incredibly exciting for us. Denise is a, is a spirited entrepreneur and uh, endlessly inspirational. She was right behind us in the same 
Claude and George is back there with Baldus. Like there's a there's a real kind of vital thing happening over on that side of town, um, and it's been a place where we've got to be super creative and roll up our sleeves and um, feel like that real startup, that scrappy startup energy again, which has been really exciting. Um, we can get to you guys' questions. I'll hit a couple that they uh, sent around to us. Um, how do you generate new ideas? Uh, you know, for us in, in design and marketing, it's everywhere, right? And so there are so many blogs and publications that we can be inspired or challenged by or seek to do work that's that good. And we all look at that kind of stuff every day. Um, I will say, like, personally also, it's always I've, I've drawn inspiration from music and musicians. Um, I started college as a math major. And I remember one of my roommates had a, a CD-ROM of uh, uh, encyclopedia this is like before the internet <laughs> and you could put in it and he had the the uh microsoft had a quotations disc as part of this cd-rom and so you put it in and it would have just various like quote you know there's whole websites about this now but i was scrolling through it and i knew bob dylan but i didn't really you know and there was a dylan quote and it was uh uh he not being he not busy being born is busy dying and i'm sitting there and i'm a math major and i thought I'm busy dying right now. <laughs> and I changed my major uh, to fine arts and worked my way to commercial art. And, you know, and that is on our wall at the office right now. Um, and I think in another, like, I just even like thinking about doing this because I'm super uncomfortable being up here and the cameras make it worse. But, like, you can find inspiration. Ev I would challenge you, like, look everywhere for it. And, um, like, I listened to ESPN radio, and Derek Rose said you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable you know and like I was I just I held on to that you know I've, I don't watch any sports I just listen to people talk about it <laughs> and feel really good about that uh, but like that kind of thing like that that's been something that that's why Bill calls I say yeah I'm gonna be horribly uncomfortable doing that Bill yes you know and that's part of uh, I think what's defined OLG just uh, we were asked excluding or what company business do you admire uh, and it's convenient because they're here, but I think that uh, Fort Wayne Outfitters, Bike Depot, Tim and Kara Hall are here. Like I admire businesses where you, um, they're first in, right? All this talk of riverfront development, they've been there and it's, it takes real courage to be first in. And the other thing that's really, I think, exciting about their business and that if you're, if you're feeling entrepreneurial and considering something like this, it's really, really, really difficult almost all the time and it's not easy being your own boss, so you should find something that you can be like truly passionate about because your passion is going to have to, will drive you and carry you through those really difficult times. And I think that's true um, at Outfitters. And I also think if like you've never been to Outfitters, and you think, well, I, I'm you know I don't kayak or mountain bike. There's a whole other side of it that's awesome, and it's this, it's the apparel and, and like like my jacket and, and my pants came from out there. <laughs> my <Anyway>. jacket. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and then the other is uh, Scott Glaze at Fort Wayne Metals. Um, with our involvement in different kind of community um, initiatives, Scott's somebody that I kind of see consistently in all these different places, and uh, I think he's someone that you can really look up to as far as, like, making a difference in the community. I always kind of think, like, maybe get a wristband that's, that's a, what would Scott Glaze do? you know, kind of wristband, because I think he's, he's somebody that just really has a lot of integrity and puts his money where his mouth is. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, okay, good. There we go. <laughs> Cut him off. Well, thank you, Matt, and Julia, and Danny. Uh, this is a special group of people, a unique group. Uh, but then again, they're, they're very, there's a common thread to uh, business ownership. They talked about autonomy. Uh, they talked about this concept of um, creating something from, from scratch, which they all have. Uh, my youngest brother, Jerry, he early on mentioned to me, um, you need to make, let people make it their ball of clay. So I try to approach that in anything I'm involved with. And uh, the downtown improvement district business whatever it may be, it really needs to be the other person's ball of clay, if you will. And um, I think that's what's so cool about business and entrepreneurship. You can create on your own, but take the responsibility for the outcome. Um, and I, th I think we've got a situation here to where uh, our ecosystem downtown 
is all about that. It's all about this, all these folks that are doing things on their own, whether they come here to live, whether they come here to work. And uh, I think Matt mentioned um, every one of his employees is a flight risk. And we talk about the regional partnership and some of these other entities. A t a t talent attraction and retention is so critical to our community and to our future. Uh, it's the youngest of the youngest there with uh, Olivia. Uh, those are the we want to keep all these people here enjoying downtown, downtown Fort Wayne. Now, I didn't know if we had any other uh, questions that came up. Uh, oh, they're to the left. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, put those out to answer. Where did your company name come from? So that was from uh, Beth Walker, and that was for all three panels. You mentioned like that Dylan quote. I didn't. I then quickly became obsessed with Bob Dylan and then spent like the later part of the 90s just following him on tour. I saw 40, 45 shows. Uh, my buddies and I like Deadheads, you know, but <laughs> with better music. And so uh, his guitar player, so not Bob. We loved Bob, and then we loved his guitar player, too. And when his guitar player left the band at the end of 1999, he sold four instruments on eBay to finance a studio he was opening in Nashville. And it was a pedal steel guitar, a dobro, a fiddle, and then an acoustic guitar. And I thought, well, I could hack away at the acoustic guitar. And so I won it on an eBay auction. Had to create an eBay account to do it. This is early days. And then thought, oh, what a cool, I got the guitar, and I thought, well, that'll be really cool to tell my kids about someday. And, and they ended up calling and saying, did you say you were a graphic designer? Because we're going to open this studio in Nashville, and we'll need some, we're going to need a logo and a website. And I, like, hyperventilated for a couple hours. And then we became good friends. And actually, to bring this full circle, his, the, the, the musician I bought the guitar from, his son is the one that's playing Monday night at OLG. Okay. And I will hyperventilate again. <laughs> Prana is a Sanskrit word, and just like if you were learning oriental medicine, you'd have to learn some new words. Um, with yoga, we learn Sanskrit. And so prana means, it means a lot of things, but it means breath, first of all. And I suffered from asthma growing up, so the breath has always been an important concept in wellness for me. Plus, being a yoga therapist and working with people with cancer, um, cancer thrives in an anaerobic environment so we can literally blast the cancer cells with our breath and then the breath is something we all share in common um, so if I come in and I'm like you know panting or hyperventilating then you're gonna be like what's wrong and you're gonna get that as well but if I'm breathing deeply um, then we can like influence each other just through our breath because it's something that we all share so it had the community aspect and it had the wellness aspect and so that's where it came from. Um, and Jai Juice, um, well, I like the alliteration first, and I wanted to have juice somewhere in the title so people knew like what it was. And then Jai is also a Sanskrit word since the business is kind of not part of prana yoga, but Danny owns both. Um, and Jai means to celebrate. And so you're thinking with juice, you're helping your cells. So you're celebrating your cells and your life. So it's kind of also fun because we do like a juice flight like you're in a bar and so if you're doing a toast you'd be like jai like celebrate um so it's kind of like goes along with the theme of our juice bar but i just i liked the name jai juice because it's short and sweet and you know we want people to be happy about being healthy so that's kind of where the celebration part comes in are you interested in reducing waste recycling as part of your business model have you encountered obstacles to this goal so far, and what would help? <laughs> yes, um, like I was saying about the waste of the juices, we've been trying really hard to not waste any. And of course, if there's an expired juice, I will drink it, and my employees will drink it, but we can't sell it past the expiration date. Um, and also, with juicing, you go through a lot of pulp. So we have the juice, which we sell, and then we have the pulp, which is left over. Um, and so we have been giving that to some farmers who can use it like during their farming months for fertilizer, which is really nice because we don't have to throw it away because it always feels it's a little 
disheartening to be throwing away all this great stuff um, that can't go into the juices. So we do that, and then sometimes, you know, people who have animals can feed it with, to their animals or do stuff with that. You can also get creative and use it for cooking, but we don't do any cooking at the juice bar, so if people want to pick it up, we can save it for them um, as long as they come and get it in a timely fashion. But that's been a huge part of our stuff. Um, and then we recycle like all of our cardboard and we recycle our bottles. We have a, um, our bottles are glass. So if you bring back your bottle, after you buy a juice, you get 50 cents off per bottle per purchase, because that's a nice way to reuse it. So you aren't throwing it away. Um, if you're going to be coming back, it's nice for us to not have to spend that cost on buying another bottle. Um, and it's nice for you because you get a discount. So that's kind of how we're recycling, um, and reusing our stuff. Yeah, this is something I always want to do more and more. When we design the studios, we design them as eco studios, so we were really conscious about the paint that we used, and we used bamboo flooring. Um, and then in our boutique, a pair of yoga pants that are made from recycled plastic bottles. Um, so we try to pick consumers that are doing really interesting things um, and that have conscious consumerism as well with um, more eco and green friendly. Um, also, we used to sell bottled water um, because it was like pretty good markup and everything. Everybody would buy one afterwards, but we realized about you know how much waste we were putting in um, with each yoga class. And so we got rid of the bottled water and we switched to an RO and we just fill up pitchers now. So it's little things like that that you can do every day. It's like, but there's always more that we can do. Yeah, obviously as a design and marketing firm, we use a lot of paper, um, and we try to be cognizant of that. And when we go to presentations, we don't try to overproduce. And and when we can, we you know we share. But but it was uh, uh, probably well, I bet it was five years ago now that we really had kind of an internal initiative to really be more thoughtful about how we were recycling. Um, I don't know how everybody is like at home, but once the city gave you that big recycling carton like it became so much easier right than just the little tubs and I think we've kind of uh, you, some of you asked like what the challenges are that was more challenging as a business to like get our version of that um, and I think we finally have now so we've got like quite a lot of recycling that happens out back and when you do, you know if we compare that to several years ago when we just had the trash dumpster it's like what we fill like four or five of those things every cycle which is pretty great How do you separate your work life and personal life as entrepreneurs, or does it all bleed together? It's for all three. It definitely all bleeds together. <laughs> um, yeah, you have to have good boundaries about that. I think the most important thing is just shutting off the computer, which I'm not always good at, and looking my kids in the eyes and looking my husband in the eyes. and spending time with them just like I would the student like the listening that I talked about earlier it becomes really important there um, because it is my lifestyle that drew me it was the passion that ignited the business and so you know it's like that's what I want to talk about that's what I want to do and there's always these ideas flowing and I want to like put them down on paper as soon as they happen and so it's not always the ideal time so um, in a way it's great because I have so much enthusiasm for what I do. Like, there's no separation between work and play. It's all play. Um, but then there's the part that just needs to shut off and rest and not think about the business for a while, which is challenging. Yeah, I would say the same. I don't really have any differentiation at all. <laughs> but I think uh, so, even, in, and that's like you know julia was talking about like building the team and i know that danny her team of instructors like it's um like the only friends i have are the people that i work with it's true some of them are here <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would say there's really not much separation um but i have found myself leaving my phone at home a lot more than i used to so maybe there's something with that but like just turning off the computer don't look at your cell phone like just give your like say like whatever happens at nine o'clock i'm not looking at anything else i'm doing whatever i want to do or you know i'm going to go to dinner with my friend and i'm not bringing my phone in like i don't care what happens it's only an hour um so if you like because it is important to take a break and do things for yourself so you really i think it's 
good to know like I'm going to be working a lot it's going to become part of my life and hopefully it's something you enjoy so that way it is fun and you do have that passion for it and you make your friends and you know you enjoy going to work but then taking that time for yourself to just leave it behind and not think about it and then you know you pick up tomorrow and you'll start again so yeah I don't there's not much separation unless you make a separation um at least for me like I feel like I'm good at saying no I'm not looking at my phone if you text me it's too bad I'll get to you tomorrow or something um but yeah you just have to be strong take some time for yourself we have one more question uh, what percentage of your sales come from prana yoga customers I think we know who that question's for oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Julia um I don't know the exact percentage but I d was considering um I actually considered a lot of the teachers and the staff who work at Prana Yoga and in the building when I was coming up with my prices because I wanted to give them all a discount. So in order to offer these discounts, I was like, well, I have to make sure I can afford it and that it works out. But we do have a lot of people who come obviously from the yoga studio because it's right next door and it's like-minded business. Like people are going to yoga for health and the juices for health. But we also have a lot of people who just come in off the street and they'll be like, oh, I didn't know you were here. You're really close to my work or I can swing by on my way downtown to do this. So it's actually been really surprising how many um, people who aren't involved with prana yoga who come in. And then, of course, they can see the studio, so then they're like, oh, what's over there? I'm like, oh, it's a yoga studio. You want to take a class? Here's a free pass. So, like, it's nice to be able to cross-promote um, both of the businesses. Or then, like, even we have Kara Anderson's hair upstairs, hair design upstairs, and, you know, she's got some business cards. So a lot of people who come to her will come down for a juice um, or a tea or coffee, and so I can send them upstairs. Like, they're like, oh, I like your hair. Where did you get it done? Well, I would go upstairs. Like, it's kind of nice to have. Um, different businesses in the building and a lot of people are curious about the building itself because it's so beautiful and so they're like what else is around here and so we can tell them you know there's um, these people doing publishing upstairs there's a one like a guitar is upstairs prana yoga there's a photography um, studio next door so there's a whole bunch of opportunities to talk about the building itself I would say about a quarter of our clients are prana members <laughs> 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 Uh, to, to, uh, I mentioned earlier that like our clients like want to meet at OLG, and one reason is because the building is so beautiful. But the other is that it's so easy to park there, and I think that we feel like a downtown agency, but we're just we don't have the perceived issues with parking downtown, and I think the same is very true for for Jai too. So um, there's a lot of parking, and it's easy in, easy out. So don't be intimidated by that kind of thing. 25% of our prana yoga clients are members. <laughs> We're trying to get that number up. <laughs> Make that commitment. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up. I think it was very, uh, very interesting to hear these stories about these entrepreneurs and downtown Fort Wayne business owners. Um, let's have a, let's give them a round of applause. Well, we hope you can join us here in future months. Uh, we'll continue to do this uh, the same Wednesday of every month. You'll get notified. Uh, our next two topics, we really want to look in the, into the aspect of how do you make a sustainable business with photography and art. So we were talking to a couple of photographers and artists downtown. Uh, that's an area where a lot of people want to be in that type of business. It's trying to be sustainable, and those types of businesses can be a challenge. So I think learning from uh, those that have been able to do it successfully over the years um, is, is really a good, good way to approach that. Also, uh, Kickstarter is a, um, a crowdfunding type of a methodology that some downtown businesses have used. So that'll be a topic of one of our, uh, our other uh, presentations. And please tell your friends, uh, let folks know, please, uh, when you get the uh, MailChimp that comes out, invite others to come and uh, learn. I think we, I, I imagine everybody had a pretty, uh, pretty enjoyable experience here. I know I sure did. So once again, thank you for your time.